KetteratCoach.com. How I know Zonger support is weak. This patient had prior trauma from a bad car accident. It's an interesting case here. I'm going to show you the video at two times normal speed. I think it's a normal case. Good dilation, not too dense of a cataract. The first hint is here. It looks like I can see a little bit of the lens capsular bag equator there in that bottom right corner. So I put some viscoelastic in the eye. Let's make our main phaco incision here. That all looks normal. Now let's start the rexus. And here's where we have the big clue. Look how much work it is to try to get this rexus done. I tried to poke in the anterior lens capsule, but the capsule's so loose. Look, the whole lens moves. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of laxity here of the zonules. Finally, I'm able to puncture in that lens, and let's see if we can get the rexus done. Now the rexus goes okay. I'll make a five millimeter rexus here. And so measuring out again with the forceps, get the rexus done. But there's going to be some serious zonal laxity here, especially in the area to the right of the phaco incision, the bottom right corner of your screen there. So I know, you know what, let's just try to get this lens up out of the bag a little bit. So a little bit of hydrodissection here. There's a denser endonucleus. The peripheral part of the lens is pretty soft. There's that dense endonucleus, so i got to tilt it up. Now let's chop this thing. So it's reasonable nuclear density. You buzz in the phaco probe, chop it in half. And I like that I'm not operating within the capsular bag, so I'm not putting stress on the bag. I chopped off a little tiny quadrant here or a sextant. We'll remove that. And using some phaco power modulations, trying to operate at about the iris plane. I don't want to be too anterior in the anterior chamber. I want to stay away from that corneal endothelium. Get that chopper in there again. And let's start breaking up this nucleus into more pieces. So at this point is where I tell my, my circulating nurse, Please, can you get me a capsular tension ring? So I've asked for uh, the largest one, the 12 millimeter capsular tension ring, and that's gonna be brought here to the operating room. And I may or may not use it, but at this point I'm pretty convinced I am gonna use it, but I'd like to have it available. So, you know, I asked the patient when the surgery was over, I said, were you ever in a car accident? Airbag hit you? And he says, well, I was in a car accident. It was an old classic muscle car of his, and there was no airbag. And his nose and his this left eye socket hit the steering wheel. And it was hit so hard that he broke his nose in a very terrible manner. And he also obviously caused significant zionor damage here. And now watch carefully. As I do the cortex removal, get that one little nuclear chip pushed down there. I'm looking carefully, and I want to do the areas nice and slowly and what am i watching i'm watching the capsular capsular rexus edge that looks okay let me see if i can oh i'm also noticing the ac is getting a little shallower and there look see that that's the lens capsular equator whoa 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 that's the equator let's let go of this thing and come out of the eye here that right there is the lens capsular bag equator look carefully at that picture i'm also noticing that fluid was getting behind the capsule in front of the anterior hyaloid face, causing the bag to be more collapsed and shallower. So I'm gonna inflate the bag with viscoelastic right now. There's still cortex in the eye. I got it, still cortex there. Let's place the CTR. So you can open the CTR for me, and I'm gonna show you, it's gonna take me a couple of tries to get it right here. So we'll get that CTR in. And this CTR, I'm gonna use a trick here. I'm gonna use a Sinsky hook in the non-dominant hand, the left hand, to help guide it through that single, the single uh, eyelid there. So. Get that in the eyelet. No, not quite. Try that again. There. Oh, try it again. And now I'll deliver it. And look how I can guide that into position and then release both ends and it goes in the bag. So nice placement of the CTR. But now what? Removal of the cortex is going to be a lot harder. I can try it, but let's first put the lens in. I'm going to put the lens in too. Let's get everything done at once. But you're saying, wait a minute. What about the cortex? You can't leave all that cortex in there. You're right. If you leave that cortex, tomorrow morning it's going to be a big, white, fluffy mess. The patient's not going to see much. So I'll try get it out here, doing a little bit of the, of the removal of the cortex with the coaxial um, IA tip, which is, it works okay. I'm kind of going underneath the optic here. It's, I just don't have the axis that I want. So you know what? Let's call for other instruments. So at this point, I say, you know what? Um, open me the bimanual irrigation aspiration set. And I'll make another paracentesis because that's going to give me a lot more access to be able to get what I want. So we're obviously going to need to make another paracentesis. Let's seal up the main incision, get the AC nice and deep. There's still a lot of cortex that has to be removed. I'm not going to leave it like this. Don't worry. Let's make another paracentesis. 
Those are free. That's easy to do. And here comes our bimanual IA. So one hand is the aspirator. That'd be in the right hand. The left hand is the infusion. And now I can really get that smaller tip deeper in the bag and get a better grip on this stuff and get a more of a tangential pull. And yes, even though the eye wall is already there and I know the capsular tension ring is holding some of the cortex up against the equator of the lens capsular bag, that's okay. I can still access all this and get it out. And we're able to really clean this up quite nicely. And by the way, this patient is actually a pilot and has an FAA license. So we'll try to clean up here that under surface, the anterior capsule rim, do a little bit of lens capsule polishing, switching hands now to get even more access. And we've cleaned it up pretty well. Now, lucky this is not a toric lens, so it can, it doesn't, the orientation, it doesn't have to be oriented in one particular meridian, but we're able to really clean up that cortex pretty nicely. Now let's seal this up here at the end and let's make sure everything is good to go. We may want to put some triamcinol on the side just to confirm to our, ourselves that there's no vitreous prolapse. I'm, I'm pretty sure there isn't, but we can always just check that. And you can see the lens is nicely positioned now, good stability. Lucky there's only that one quadrant of zinal weakness. And you can see the lens is lined up nicely. Here's the triamcinolone and the anterior segment is clear. There's no vitreous prolapse. So nice looking case here. Woo, escaped without any trouble. Thanks for watching.